Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in. We're gonna to listen to an outspoken author, Harry Dent. Now, people say that he's outspoken because he's been warning people that we're going to have the crash of our lifetime and that it's actually gonna be worse than the 2008 recession. And I'll be honest, guys, originally when I first started analyzing the housing market back in 2022, I didn't really think that this crash that we are going to have, by the way, was going to be worse than 2008. I thought it would be more of a natural deflation type of situation. It goes down, it goes up together. But now fast forward to today, there's so much more inflation that's continuously being kicked in the market. It hasn't even stopped. They keep kicking inflation into our market. And it seems as though that society, not everyone, but a lot of people in society are absolutely clueless as to what's going on. So this video, it should be absolutely bonkers. Now we'll listen to a brief cliff of Harry Dent, and then we're going to go into an article and we're going to ask ourselves, do we agree with him or not? And some of the stuff he's about to say, mind blowing. Hope you guys enjoy. At least the first one was a natural one. You know, in 20, 25 to 29 was a natural bubble. There was no stimulus behind that, artificial stimulus per se. So this is new. This has never happened. Governments have never felt the power to just say, well, you know what? We're not going to take a depression after our great bubble and party. We're not going to take the hangover. We're just going to, what do you do if you want to cure a hangover? You drink more. And that's what they've been doing. And so this is not good policy, my point of view. And you know what? If this, go, if this can go another five years, I may have to admit, you know what? Flooding the money with extra, uh, the economy with extra money forever might actually enhance the overall economy long-term. But what we'll only see when we see this bubble burst, and again, this bubble's been going 14 years instead of most bubbles, five to six. All right, so the first thing I want to unpack is, is what does he mean that we've bubble for 14, 15 years. And that's exactly what I want to show you guys right now, because I've been constantly warning people, you guys, right before we went into lockdown, the Fed was already trying to get control of the bubble that we had before, before the lockdowns. Let me show you guys. Now, again, we're talking about before 2020. Okay. So let's look right here. This is an overlay of Case Shiller home value or price index. So it's not median. They actually try to have an index. It's not perfect, but it's something. But look at you guys, essentially from 2011 to about 2019, we had a massive gap happening between basically what consumers are making and can afford versus the prices of houses. You see that right here. I mean, look at the gap. The Basically, the gap was similar to the gap during the great financial crisis that I'm right here. So the great financial crisis, look at that bottom black line and that top red line. You see that gap between the two. And again, fast forward to 2019, that gap is almost exactly the same. So they knew that a housing market bubble was forming before lockdowns. And I know that for a fact, because look at this, they started selling mortgage backed securities. You guys look at this in 2018. Now this is mortgage backed securities held by the fed. Now when the fed purchases mortgage backed securities, that's really called quantitative easing and it allows lenders to lend to us and to continue to make profit. So just keep giving mortgages away. Don't worry. The government's going to buy that from you. Just keep lending, keep lending and keep lending. But Again, they try to soften that. You can see that right here. Mortgage-backed securities going down, down, down. Look at that. They were doing a good job. And then boom, lockdown happened. And the exact opposite happened. Mortgage-backed security purchases skyrocketed to the likes of which we can't even comprehend. And that's why we have so much pain that we're going through right now. And that we're going to continue to go through. We have to pay for this. That's mortgage-backed securities. Again, look at that. Right before lockdowns, they were trying to stop the bubble. And it's not just mortgage-backed securities. You can see by looking at this chart, this is the federal funds rate. So back at the beginning of 2016, they started raising the federal funds rate of this. They started raising it again to combat the bubble that was here that no one's talking about right before we went into lockdowns. You see that? There's no guessing here. They raised the federal funds rate. Look at this. Before 2016, it was zero. You guys know that it was already zero, just like it is now. Look at that. See, it was 0.13, 0.14. That's the federal funds rate. And then boom, we got to ratchet this down. We can't let the bubble get any bigger. And then what happened as soon as lockdowns came? Look at that. 
they slashed that sucker down. And now we're in an even worse situation than the GFC. So don't forget that we have a dual bubble going on here. So we have like a multi bubble and then it's being held up by inflation. Now listen to what Harry has to say in some of this stuff, you guys, it's gonna get like real juicy and real spicy. And when we get to the stock market, understand I'm not a stock guy. So I don't know if what he's saying is gonna happen, but he makes some really alarming, alarming conclusions. In 1925 to 1929, it was a natural bubble. There was no stimulus behind it, artificial stimulus per se. So this is new. This has never happened before. He's talking about right now. What do you do if you want to cure a hangover? You drink more alcohol. And his point is, is like, you guys, it's destined to fail. And the only way to keep it propped up is, is you make it even worse. You got to give it even more drugs. And if it was hung over based on like three shots of whiskey, now we need four shots of whiskey. It's just going to get worse until the wheels fall off. Now listen to this, guys. This is crazy. It's going to go into the stock market. If the stock market goes, that's going to be a massive hit to every market. As markets inch closer to the halfway mark of this year, U.S. stocks ended the month of May with gains as the tech-heavy NASDAQ, NASDAQ stole the show, finishing up 6.9%. The S&P 500 was up 4.8% and the Dow was up 2.3%. Nearly two weeks ago, tech and AI-heavy NVIDIA announced a 10-for-1 stock split, propelling shares past $1,000 three days later, making it an all time high. So you could kind of say that like all of the growth and like a feeling of success is not in our homes anymore. It's in the stock in this literally like this one stock. Think about what I'm saying. Now, actually, you know what? Think about what he's about to say. I think we're going to see the S&P go down. I'm having trouble it leaving my mouth. It's, it's very difficult. But he's thinking that the S&P is going to go down from its top 86% and that the NASDAQ is going to go down 92%. A hero stock like NVIDIA, as good as it is, and it's a great company, goes down 98%. Boy, this is over. Dent stressed. You guys, I'm completely out of the stock market, FYI. And thank God, because if I did not go out when I did and I got made fun, people were like, oh, now you have a loss. I sold the stock at $60, okay? That stock right now, I just checked last night, is at $9. Thank God that I sold. Unfortunately, I, I shouldn't even mess with it to begin with, but whatever. We have never seen the government sustain a totally artificial bubble for a decade and a half and see what happens after that. So they've been sustaining this bubble for a decade and a half unnaturally. It's not just lockdowns is what I'm trying to tell you guys. It's going to be real bad when this corrects you guys because people can't afford this life. People cannot afford it. I don't care what the data says and what these you know economists say that sound like encyclopedias it doesn't matter people are suffering i know that for a fact but i can it goes on but i can tell you there has not been one bubble and this is far larger and longer one major bubble in history that has not ended badly period it's going to end badly it is and i don't know why this is so hard for everyone to understand except for the fact I get it because mainstream media, it's all about optimism in as far as getting you to spend your money. So optimism to spend money. That's where their optimism is because that's what their sponsors pay them to push. The only edit to dense prediction is the timing. The timing has been hard because of why? Inflation. Noting market bottoms are likely to show sometime between early and mid 2025. That's a year away. At the center of the bubble stands the real estate market. Dent previously predicted that housing would see 2012 lows this year of 2024, so he's a pretty big doomer, and claimed Tuesday that U.S. homes have already increased by double or more what they'll soon be worth. And honestly, tell me, guys, do you agree with him? Do you think home value is going to go back to 2012 levels? Do you really think that? That's when that virgin started to happen. Personally, I don't think we go back to 2012. It's possible, but 2012 would be, I mean, could you imagine how bad the economy and I mean, so I just want to know what you feel. Okay. I'd be happy if they went back to 2019. Okay. In fact, I can find very rare. I can kind of find places at 2019 right now. They're fix up houses, sweat equity type houses. They're not turnkey, but either way, do you guys think that home value is going to go 
2012 levels. No time in history has housing been so widely owned and so many people having second and sometimes third homes just for speculation. While pointing out that countries like China and Japan are seeing a rise is seeing a rising number of residents buy empty properties as collateral to a potential market crash. If you understand what the cycles are, you don't have to buy the most expensive home in history right at the top of the market and then moan 14 years while it goes through the next downturn, like 1929 and 1942, 1968 and 1982, or what would have been without all this 27 trillion stimulus 2008 to 2022. So he's saying that we, we avoided a depression because the government printed us out of that depression. Do you guys agree with what he's saying? I mean, this guy is going heavy and I agree with a lot of what he's saying. A couple more paragraphs here. Dent also responded to critics who have called his hyperthesis crazy and accused him of fear mongering. It means fear mongering for what? I want you to be afraid. So Look after yourself. I, I want you, I'm going to fear monger so you get in power. I'm going to fear monger so you don't wastefully spend your money. Hmm. What a horrible person. But he goes on. I just say what I see. Frankly, don't give a darn if people don't like it because you have got to choose. Are you going to tell the truth? Or are you going to make people happy? They call me a perma bear. That's absolutely uncategorized. That's absolute BS. Looking at it from history and standing back, nothing's been more obvious. And I agree with him. A lot of other bubbles in history just do not have the steepness or the magnitude. Why? We've never realized the power that central banks, the Federal Reserve, can have to just print money out of thin air. I like this guy. People find him radical thinking that mapping long-term trends is easier than in the short term, according to the financial author. There really is nowhere to hide except the safest bonds in the world, Dent says. And that's actually where I put all of my liquidity is in the bond market. So I appreciate what he's saying. We're the largest economy in the world. We will endure this downturn. And if they can print money to create a bubble, they can print money to pay off their bonds. Of course. In the Great Depression, the big crash came between 1929 to 1932. And then the follow-ups was 1938 to 1942. It reversed now because all of the stimulus we had made from the 2009 crash. The big crash is going to come on the back end. This is going to wash all of the excess out of the market, bring the markets down to where they should be so the millennial generation can have a boom that is healthier and that they can invest their savings into for retirement. That sounds great. Anticipating the bubble of all bubbles, Dent previously advised in December for investors to move their capital out of the stock market. If he had to own a new home, he'd pick Bitcoin. Wow. That's crazy that he's saying that. Let's go on here. Because it's in a leading sector now in its early stage that has bubbled the most. That's how you know a leading sector, it crashes. Bitcoin already been down over 70%. We haven't been in recession yet, so that's how volatile it is. It crashes the most. So that's what I would buy if I could buy one thing two or three years from now near a bottom. That's crazy. Then he goes on, but Dent wants investors to remember this. The government created this bubble 100%. Totally artificial, injecting a drug to artificially perform stronger. It's like on steroids, right? And again, everything from human life to history shows you don't get something for nothing and bubbles always burst. It's a much, much, it's a much, much higher probability than anyone gives it. I mean, seriously, what'd you guys think? I personally, I want to reach out to him. I want him to come on my I don't know, I want him to talk more because I love it. He's one of the few people that are actually like acknowledging that we were already in a bubble before we went into lockdowns. And that the only reason that we're not in depression and recession right now is because the government printed money. And now they've printed too much money that we have nowhere else to go but pain and crash. You guys see the inflation yourself. I mean, we see inflation and by inflation, I mean money. The problem with inflation is, y'all, it's not our money. 
It's the government's money. It's corporation. It's bankers money. It's not our money. We just have to pay for it in the form of everything going up in price. And I'm going to tell you guys, it's not fucking fair. And I hate it. And I don't think that there should be mortgage backs. I don't think that there should be quantitative tightening. I think that they needed to bust and we need to get this over with. I mean, if they would have allowed the housing market to bust in 2020, 2023, we would not have as many buyers that are about to get burned because they didn't know what was coming. I mean, think about it, you guys. Think about all the people that blindly purchased real estate because of mainstream headlines saying, or even Dave Ramsey saying that home prices don't go up. Imagine being those people, or you don't have to imagine, just literally go on to Google right now and type in Google home buyer's remorse and see what those people are saying. Now, other than that, guys, we found value in this video. Please don't forget, like the video. It really helps out the channel. Give me some comments below if you guys can share it as well. And don't forget, you guys, I got it. Commercial lending. Really excited about it. If you need any help with commercial lending, reach out to me. I have a form in my description below. I would love to help you. But even more important, I hope you got some new value, insights, and perspective. And now if you guys are out there investing in real estate, you guys already know. I hope you win.